Throw down a list of the great races and you'll no doubt get the likes of the Indy 500 and 24 Hour of Le Mans. But the one race that I look forward to is one that takes place on a hill in the middle of the worst state in Australia. Look, I'm sorry New South Wales, but you have this, this and this. But getting back on track here, the race in question is the Bogan Festival that is the Bathurst 1000 and will serve as the final round of this year's Supercars Championship. Now I'm sure some of you will be wondering how this could compare with the likes of the Indy 500, Daytona 500 or the 24 Hour of Le Mans. Well, since down if you aren't already and let me give you the skinny In 1960, the Light Car Club of Australia organised a race called the Armstrong 500, which was being held at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit over 500 miles with standard production cars. It was divided into classes based on engine capacity, or price, or the customer's hair colour, but by 1962, the track surface was falling apart like Joe Soward in a heatwave, and thus the race needed a new home. And they found it at the Mount Panorama Circuit in Bathurst, New South Wales. The 3.9 mile circuit hosted its first event in 1960. The race was extended from 500 miles to 1,000 kilometers in 1973 and also served as the 8th round of the World Touring Car Championship back in 1987. Nowadays, the 1,000 kilometer event is run as part of the popular Supercars Championship that is held throughout Australasia. Known as the Great Race down in this part of the world, this event has seen some insane races and some spectacular moments in its history and there is every reason why you should be watching this event. So I'm going to provide a rundown of this year's event and convince you as to why this is THE great race. So as I've mentioned before, the race is held at the Mount Panorama Circuit at Bathurst. This thing is regarded as one of the best racetracks in the world, and having made the trip to the venue over the last couple of years, there's good reason for it. The first turn drivers have to negotiate is Hell Corner. It's easy to get it wrong here, and if you do, you're gonna have a real bad time. It's also vital to get a good exit out of this corner for a good run up Mountain Straight, the second longest straight on the circuit. The cars will become slightly airborne over the hump before heading into the negatively cambered Griffin's Bend. But be careful not to stray too far off line here, otherwise you're gonna smack. Running up the hill, the next series of corners is at the cutting, which has a steep 1 in 6 gradient exit, and trust me, it's a bastard to walk up. But with the cars, it's even more precarious, as any wrong footing will lead to big problems. Oh yeah, that incident? Well, to explain what happened here, I've drafted in an Aussie to give you the lowdown. Seriously, a lot can happen over the course of a thousand kilometers. And a perfect example of this was in 2005, where two drivers would quite literally go head to head, but outside of the car. The two drivers being Marcus Ambrose and Greg Murphy would collide on lap 144 and leave behind what looked like a eight cylinder car park behind them. Ambrose was ahead of Murphy of the exit of Griffins, but quickly ended up sideways after being tagged by Murphy. Well, depending on how you look at it. Ambrose's car would then mount the barrier and almost look like it was going to fall over the other side into the bushland. After the two cars came to a stop, Murphy stood in front of his car as Ambrose got out and made his charge towards him, taking off his helmet, then his balaclava, and of course, his gloves. The two drivers had some friendly words, pointed fingers, and yelled at each other like two blokes having a disagreement at the pub. The legend of this moment will always be in my memory. Two blokes wanting to just beat the living daylights out of each other on a mountain out in the middle of nowhere in New South Wales. This to me is Australian motorsport in its prime. Thank you very much Geo for coming along. So coming out of the cutting, we're into Reed Park, which for the first section of that could be rather uneventful. However, the second right turn, you kind of need to get that right, otherwise you're in for a big ass crash. But if you do manage to crash at this section of the track, at least you'll be at peace of mind knowing that you're at the top of the mountain and with the fine folk that camp at this section of the track. The next section of the track is called Salmon Park, and this is where the track begins to edge a little more on the scary side. In fact, with it comes the shortest horror story in motor racing history, Wide at the Great. Why is this scary? Well... Could not steer the car. Quick up Craig Loud, Zinger replay, Steve Johnson had just got Taylor. It just got away from up here, you'll see it. Oh, they both went in. Going on from there, the cars will scream through McPhillamy Park, a fast section of the track with a panoramic view across Brock's skyline that reminds you how bloody high you are. 
So imagine if Frank Montagni was driving. Then we begin the run down the hill, beginning with the S's. It's crucial that you slow down enough through this section, otherwise you're going to learn the hard way that car versus wall often leads to big ouch. Then there's the dipper, basically the Aussie version of the corkscrew, only with this one there's no runoffs, and it's pretty scary. Coming out of the dipper, you then make the approach toward Forest Elbow, which is a prime overtaking opportunity, provided you do it right, before making the long run down Conrad Strait. Here the cars get close to or at 300 kilometers an hour. The road rises and falls away as the cars build up speed. For the cars behind, it's an opportunity to get into the draft and prepare for another move at the chase, which is another great opportunity for passing. The one thing you don't want at this part of the track is a tire failure, but guess what? That's happened here before. Exiting the chase leads you to the final corner at Murray's. A 90 degree corner you say? Easy you reckon? Yeah, tell that to Alexander Rossi. And therein is a lap of Mount Panorama, but really, me explaining it doesn't do justice. You need to witness these cars try and put 650 horsepower to the ground on a track barely wide enough for luge racing. As for the teams and drivers, if you're unfamiliar with any of these cats, I'll give you the skinny on some drivers of note. There is Scott McLaughlin, three-time supercars champion and the defending Bathurst 1000 winner. Craig Lowndes, seven-time winner on the mountain and three-time supercars champion. Jamie Winker. Seven time supercars champion and four time winner of the great race. In fact, overall, there are 11 people on the grid who have won the Bathurst 1000 race in the past. Although there will be plenty of people hungry for their first Bathurst title, including Toyota Racing Series champion Thomas Randall, British Formula 4 champion Scott Pye, Longpan GT Series and supercars champion Shane Van Gisbergen, Japan F3 champion and Jaguar F1 test driver James Courtney, and Brody Kosticki, who is. Uh, uh, oh. On a serious note, this guy's f***ing fast. The grid is sorted through a qualifying format where 11th place downwards is decided through the first qualifying session, while the top 10 are decided in a one lap shootout, which is one of the more spectacular parts of not just the weekend, but the entire season of supercars racing. Pole position is not too bad, although not really vital. Since 1997, there have only been five occasions where the pole sitter took victory at the end of the day, so there is a good chance that the fastest car on Saturday will not claim the Peter Brock trophy on Sunday. So this year's race starts at 11.30am Aussie time on the 18th of October, and I beg and plead with anyone unfamiliar with this race to give it a watch. Oh, don't, and I could just go f*** myself. Or perhaps there are some people viewing this who have watched the race. What are your memories of this race? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. And always remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus, and as always, I'll see you all later.